Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me, and thanks for coming, everyone. I want to present to you uh, possibly the worst lecture to give before lunch. It's a talk on airway decontamination. I'm an anesthesiologist. My main career has been in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for 20 years. I started uh, training in Chicago and ended up in Milwaukee, and my wife always said we'd either end up in Milwaukee, uh, basically Wisconsin or Texas, based sort of on my personality. So that came uh, to light. My disclosures, um, let me go back one slide. Um, I am an inventor of a couple things that I'll talk about. I invented a mannequin that vomits, it's a salad mannequin. I also invented a suction catheter. There's a picture of it on the right from my friend uh, Jim Horowitz in New York City. His kids were playing with the suction catheter and he found it on the toaster. Uh, I will give you links at the end of the uh, talk here so that you can look at uh, the various uh, products and uh, some of the open source um, information I've provided. My goal here is not to sell you a product, it's to sell you an idea because you can go home and you, after we do this here at this uh, seminar, I'm hoping that you'll take this home and make it your own. Well, the goals of this presentation, is this microphone working okay? Uh, okay, it's fading in and out of me. Why is airway contamination important? I'm going to show you a paper. Uh, this is uh, 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 commonly known knowledge, but I'm going to show you the literature that shows that airway contamination is quite is probably the f the major cause of failure in your first pass success attempt at uh, airway management in emergency medicine, critical care, and parts of anesthesia involving uh, severely contaminated airways. I'm going to talk a little bit about the new tools and skills available for managing contaminated airways, and third, thirdly, we're going to talk about methods to learn how to handle the problem. So we're going to talk about a simulation system. When we talk about airway algorithms, we've all, um, uh, many of the previous lectures mentioned airway algorithms, but what I want to say about this is that there's really sort of two ways of looking at this. There's the bright side and the dark side, and I'm going to talk about the dark side. Everybody wants to talk about oxygenation and ventilation, but the huge, the biggest obstacle to getting there is uh, making sure that you have an unobstructed path for uh, both ventilation, oxygenation, and intubation. So here we are, we're at the bright side of the airway management coin. On the bottom of the slide, you're going to see the airway algorithms. I, uh, we owe a big, uh, a big thanks to Nicholas Grimes and his partner down in uh, Australia for the Vortex. These are uh, an improvement in the cognitive um, thinking of how to handle uh, thinking in emergency situations, but they're only focused on oxygenation ventilation. Uh, they may actually cause you to encourage you to ventilate in the presence of contaminant. I'm going to simply say to you right now that decontamination is a poorly defined but very important step in airway management. As Rich was saying in the previous lecture, it negates your ability to ventilate by mask or supraglottic airway. It will negate your, uh, uh, your, your nasal oxygen, uh, your apneic oxygenation, and it will negate all methods of airway endoscopy, and there's a quote from Rich himself. It is a major determinant in the failure of first pass success intubation attempts. And here is the slide that if you want a piece of literature that you may find useful, this is the one to take the photo of. This is from uh, Sakels and uh, Mosier at the University of Arizona in Tucson. They took four years prospectively and they every single intubation in their ICUs were done with video laryngoscopy, 906 consecutive patients. They used predominantly a Mac-shaped video laryngoscope, and they used uh, the glide scope. The top two determinants of first attempt failure were presence of blood in the airway followed by airway edema. This was published in uh, recently, March 2017, of the Annals of American Thoracic Society. Now, here's the next question. For those of you who work in the pre-hospital environment, this is no big news, but in a French pre-hospital study in uh, 2013, all out-of-hospital cardiac arrest victims greater than 18 years of age were entered into this database, and they asked the clinical question, what is the frequency at which regurgitation occurs during out-of-hospital cardiac arrest management? And what they found out was that 25% of these out of, uh, victims regurgitated prior to the arrival of EMS, and 7% of them regurgitated during uh, airway management during laryngoscopy. So um, let's talk a little bit about why I'm here today. I am 
sort of an inventor of many things, including a concept, and my wife thinks that this is a really dumb name, but I explained to her I couldn't call it beef. There's no way the line, it'll line up. It's salad, okay? It's suction-assisted laryngoscopy with simultaneous airway decontamination. I'm going to show you with simulation and some videos how to actually let your suction catheter, a rigid suction catheter, mind you, do the work of opening the oral pharynx, hypopharynx, simultaneously decontaminating the airway, giving you a better chance at first pass success for getting the laryngoscope in the mouth, around the base of the tongue to expose the larynx. And then I'm going to show you a way how to continuously decontaminate the hypopharynx during tracheal tube delivery. Fundamental points are we're going to use the rigid suction catheter like a tongue depressor. We're going to use it to actually open the oral pharynx. We're going to control the tongue. If you shoot down the midline, as Rich is, is suggesting, if you have a problem with the tongue, you can use the rigid suction catheter like a hockey stick to literally push the tongue to the other side of the blade. It's very simple. We'll do it in simulation so you understand. It also will uh, decontaminate on an ongoing basis. It helps you avoid the mistakes in emergency, the most common mistakes in emergency airway management. Poor tongue control, insertion of a laryngoscope in a grossly contaminated airway, and it also gives you a strategy for ongoing airway decontamination. So I'm going to ask my colleague here just to launch the uh, introductory video. The use of the NASCO salad simulator. We're using the manual pump to fill the pharynx of the mannequin. I'll show this with the video laryngoscope. As we can see, it's filling up very nicely. And I'm going to demonstrate the salad technique now. I'll begin with the su suction catheter in my right hand. I'm going to be using a product by SCORE. This is the Ducanto catheter. I'm going to grip the catheter upside down in preference to the usual manner in which these rigid suction catheters are held. Decontaminating the oral pharynx. And I'm going to utilize this rigid suction catheter to actually push the tongue down so I can more easily put the blade inside the uh, mouth of the uh, mannequin. I'm going to perform this under direct laryngoscopy and you're going to follow along with video. I'm decontaminating the hypopharynx and I'm leading with the tip of the suction catheter. I'm engaging the molecule and exposing the larynx. I'm just going to suction some secretions and simulate airway contaminant on the larynx. Now, I would like to leave this suction catheter in place during the intubation, but you're going to see here that the suction catheter is totally in the way of tube delivery, whether that be direct laryngoscopy or video laryngoscopy. This is the reason I would want to leave the catheter in place in the event of repeated soiling. So I'm going to move the suction catheter to the left of the laryngoscope blade and place it into the upper esophagus. So in the event of repeated soiling, the suction catheter can absorb the, uh, the airway contaminant. I'm going to deliver my tracheal tube now. I'm going to do this under direct laryngoscopy. And before I ventilate, I'm going to run a flexible suction catheter down that tracheal tube. Gently release my laryngoscope. Suction that tracheal tube. Beautiful. And now I'm going to ventilate. Okay, there you have it. Okay. Uh, moving on here, the standard equipment that we have available to us was invented actually uh, over 110 years ago in New York City by Sidney Yankauer. He was an otolaryngologist at Mount Sinai Hospital. He intended this for intraoral surgery in a day and age uh, when ether was the major anesthetic used in the United States. Uh, as we all know, cautery and ether don't mix, especially in the auto oral pharynx. So your technique of hemostasis is direct pressure as well as the use of obviously uh, absorbable chromic gut suture. So the purpose of that suction catheter was to remove uh, the bleeding phase of the bleeding. So you could locate the bleeder, put direct pressure, and then put a stitch through the mucosa and tie a knot. So that's what that's designed for. These catheters are designed to not pull the clot off of the bleeding surface. It's designed to simply evacuate the blood so you can identify the site of bleeding and, and, and uh, stop the bleeding. 
Uh, what we have commercially available, at least this is in the United States, uh, this is a product circa 1998. It's called the Big Yank. It's uh, 16 American dollars approximately in the United States. I don't think, I don't know if this has European distribution, but this is a larger bore suction catheter that has um, a removable tip in the, in the event that you encounter solids. The suction tubing itself is not removable from the catheter and it's large and it goes to what's called the pore spout or pore cap of the suction container. This is something that uh, you don't see it very much in the US, but this is a cool product. It's called the LS4 Lipsky Schultz Super Sucker. And this is intended for solids. It is so bulky, it's something that you would never carry outside of a hospital if indeed you would acquire this at all. And the concept here is to have a large bore sucker with a large bore suction tubing the size of a ventilator tubing going back to a suction container. We're going to look at the evolution of the rigid suction catheter now. So from 1907 down to 2016, we have the Yankauer, the High d which is a product by SCORE, the company that makes the Ducanto suction catheter. The S3, which I've brought along with me, it essentially looks like a big frozen yogurt spoon, which is intended to help you debride the pharynx of solid matter. And then we have the Ducanto, which is a, essentially a hypercurved version of the high D, but I've removed the vent, the vent hole. The high D's been available since 1987. This is a company that uh, started in Los Angeles, California. Its, it, its major customer base, of course, is in the United States. The Los Angeles County Fire Department uses their products quite uh, often. Uh, and this has been a um, mainly a pre-hospital product in the United States until recently. Uh, the recent innovation of taking that catheter and making it into that shape allows it to work with glide scopes, D blades, King Visions, air tracks, etc. Uh, it's compatible with the hypercurve video laryngoscopes. It also works very well with direct laryngoscopy. We've also removed the vent hole to uh, reduce that uh, potential to produce error during use. Learning and practicing the simulation requires you to modify an airway training mannequin. I'm sure that many of you have very old mannequins as if you've been in this business long enough. And I'm going to say to you that what you can do is you can modify it to do what we're going to do with the simulation later this evening and what, you, what Jesus saw in the, in the video. We're going to basically, what I'm going to suggest to you is that if you're able to actually uh, build the knowledge base and abilities of your newest members of your group or your department from the ground up by teaching airway decontamination as an initial skill alongside the other skills, I believe that we can produce a more resilient clinician moving forward into the future, whether they be uh, physicians or physician extenders. This is a couple photos from simulating thick liquid airway contaminants. On the upper left is the Orland Park, uh, Illinois Fire Department. They're very much into this. On the bottom right is a recent uh, seminar in Wisconsin. Uh, this is a friend of mine from Wisconsin. His name is Robert Barracks, and he has decided to rebuild his airway management teaching program for his fire department completely around airway decontamination and video laryngoscopy. I have international partners in this project. I have a few of them here today. On the bottom left is a lady from Hong Kong. Uh, that's Shing Ko. And the top on the right is uh, Tim Lewenberg uh, down at Kangaroo Island, Australia. And I've got Carmen De La Vella here. And he is uh, seen here teaching the uh, mountain rescue crew from Italy in this uh, photograph here. Uh, I was uh, pleased to know at SMAC last year that uh, the Sydney HEMS decided to make this a standard method of training. So just to let you know that one of the premier HEMS organizations in the world has decided to bring this in as a standard method of teaching within their organization. It, having my name on this doesn't really make a whole, uh, it doesn't really give me a, a tremendous amount of pride. What gives me the pride is that I was able to pass this on to someone who saw the value in it and said, this is the way we should be doing things moving forward. That is the meaning to me. So here we are at SMAC in 2015 when I first introduced this simulator. Uh, the lady on the right is now an attending in South Africa, and I don't remember the name of the guy on the left. But is this really an effective tool for teaching airway decontamination skills? I did do one study on this using what's called a learning perception study in which we gave pre-test and post-test uh, questionnaires to the individuals who went through the simulation. And what they were a uh, I was able to show was that there was a demonstrable improvement from, uh, say, um, 
one level from say three to four uh, following the simulation that they were confident in their ability to manage the airway of a vomiting hemorrhaging patient. I have a four minute video to show you next. It's gonna be worth watching because I'm gonna say something that I just learned recently and that the upgrade that this technique can bring to basic life support may be equal or greater than the upgrade to uh, uh, advanced life support Let's go ahead and roll this video. So the question we're gonna ask you here is, can you ventilate through the, through, throughout the traditional period of the apneic period of, of uh, RSI? But give yourself one pump on the pump handle of the- So I'm face mask ventilating this mannequin and we're gonna put airway contaminant into it. My assistant is a trained paramed HEMS paramedic. She's gonna look to see when she can feel a change in compliance of the, ba the self-inflating bag. Again. Give yourself another pump. Tell me when you feel the airway contaminant. You don't feel it yet, do you? Nope. Okay, keep going until we get it. Keep going. <laughs> this is awful. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's see how much we have in there. We're going to just turn on the video and just go up and inspect the hypopharynx. And could you bring him up here so, just so we could see? Okay, let's see how much airway contaminant do we have in there before she felt that she had a problem. That's right up to the glottis. Do you guys think that that's a problem? Okay, let me suck that out. So go ahead and activate suction. Now we're gonna do it again with a different tool, okay, next which question. you'll learn at the bar. Okay, we're gonna use a gadget called an oxalator, and this is gonna be great. And you guys are all gonna be happy, and you're gonna love what I'm showing you once I show you the oxalator. And we'll just lay this on a chair. And we're gonna use this little dude. Let me have Mr. Mask. Mr. Mask. Okay, now do I need an assistant? I'm gonna set this at 25 centimeters of water now. And I'm gonna ventilate him. And do I need anybody to help me ventilate? Two-handed technique, bilateral jaw thrust, just like Rich was doing with his 300-pound uh, patient. Here we go. It's gonna pop off at 22 centimeters of water or so. It's called an oxalator. It's from Canada, but it's available here in uh, your country. There's stuff in there. Okay, give me one pump on the pump handle. Give me another. Oh, wait a minute. With only two pumps on the pump handle, this thing signal an airway obstruction that there's something wrong in the airway. If I'm stuck at the basic life support level and I'm using this, this is telling me stop and inspect the airway. So pull the video laryngoscope up again, and let's see, I'm sorry, thank you for doing that. I'm gonna inspect the airway, and our air, our airway of liquid, how is it with only two pumps, I'm at this level, but for some reason, at four pumps I was at the same level. It's because I was pushing puke down the airway, and she couldn't feel it. Now it's at the level that's critical, with only two pumps, but the oxalator told us this. So I want you all to have fun with the oxalator. Let's go ahead and decontaminate this. Okay, off. Okay, so I want each of you just to try the oxalator. I want you just to pick it up and turn the gold button on by turning the gold O button to the right. Just turn it on, lock it down, lock it down, lock it down. There you go. Okay, let's see you do some mass ventilation. Two hands. And he's doing EC, which is fine, but we're gonna we're gonna help him. Give him one pump. Give him one more. Okay, suction. Just do it. So this is a tremendously streamlined, simplified method for basic life support. This is a tool that ventilates and gives you an idea about when there's airway contamination. This is simple. Make a seal. Just need a seal, better seal. So this thing does not lie. If you don't have a seal or an open airway, give another pump on the handle. One more pump. Ooh, good deal. Okay, I'm going to the next slide here. So uh, I'm, I may finish a little bit early, but we'll see. 
in conclusion, the future aspirations of this project, it's an intentional joke, by the way, it, it's to circulate the awareness of the salad method and simulation worldwide to improve emergency airway management. I'm in the process of designing and implementing a study to uh, determine which extraglottic airway reduces uh, aspirated material uh, in simulated conditions. And um, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, reducing the potential for airway contamination to cause failure to rescue and airway management. This is sort of the next frontier of airway decontamination, and I'm actually working on a project to create a catheter to be able to handle this sort of decontamination. Um, this is, I'd like to end on sort of a, a joyous note here. Uh, this is the most interesting article I've ever found on airway decontamination. And um, I'm not going to have to read it for you because it's too small for most of you in the back, but the, the article's from the Telegraph. It says, man almost dies after Dover sole jumps down his throat. A fisherman almost died after a Dover sole he had caught jumped down his throat. His life was saved by paramedics after the fish wriggled free from his hands and choked him. Now, apparently, this... A uh, paramedic had to use a, uh, a McIntosh, is this coming? Macintosh laryngoscope and McGill forceps to get this thing out of this guy. This guy required CPR, and he, the fish started coming apart on him, so he had to be careful to grab the spine of the fish to get the dang thing out. And it, it is, the guy's got, I, the, 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 unfortunately, this guy's got such an incredible, pathetic look on his face, I just have to smile. I'm like, oh my, oh my God. But this is a, this is this is great. Okay, the, this this is a professional guy from the NHS. He saved this guy's life. Don't don't mess around with Dover Soul. So you know what I'd like to do is leave you with something to think about. This is something that we'll play within uh, our simulation time, and I'm hoping when you leave here, you'll take it with you and you'll make it your own. You don't have to do it exactly my way, but I think the simulator will help you learn and you're going to arrive at the same conclusions that I've arrived at. So things are weird in the 21st, in the, as we approach the, the third decade of the 21st century, and I'm, all I've got to say is that anybody who's come here is not a normal, regular physician. Some may say you're strange or weird, but the truth is, is from my good, uh, my, one of my most favorite authors, Hunter S. Thompson, when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. So thanks. <laughs>